Let's look at the map. It's the 27th of January and a lot's happening. Force R has split. Battleship Rodney has taken the cruiser Exeter and the destroyer Brighton with her in pursuit of the damaged Mutu. Meanwhile, the damaged Royal Oak with the Ark Royal Carrier, which doesn't have many planes on it, with Ajax and HMS Fame are headed back to Melvin, but they can only travel at 13 knots. That's the speed of the damaged Royal Oak. As the new task force designated AR heads for Melville, the Japanese submarine Ho has found them with its reconnaissance plane and is setting up for an attack. The um, Allied submarine force designated X-1 has sailed west through the straits between Salt Island and Island S-1, but was seen by the reconnaissance plane from the Japanese submarine So. The Japanese submarine So sent this information back to headquarters at Tori Harbour, and it was immediately sent out to Japanese Battle Group M, which now know that an Allied submarine is possibly setting up an ambush attack. If we look at the map to the north and east of Barracuda Straits, we see that uh, British Group E have arrived at Ambon Island and are taking control of that island. The Force H, which was designated Hood, Hood was of course sunk, um, have arrived at Barracuda Island and are taking on fuel and supplies with a little bit of rest for their crew. And the Japanese Force A has made it back to Torrey Harbour. They were shadowed all the way by British Submarine Force X, which decided it was way too risky to launch an attack because of the number of destroyers escorting the battle group back. The Japanese battleship in that force has gone into harbour for repairs, and that, of course, is the Huso, and it will be in there roughly for about six weeks. All right, so that's the that's the the state of play as at the twenty seventh. We'll see what the Japanese submarine Ho can do. Needless to say, we know all this information because the spy network all over Barracuda Straits is very active on both sides. this game up the uh, crew of the submarine have listened to their six torpedoes hitting Royal Oak and they pretty much know that that's going to be the end of that battleship so the way you play submarine games is if you have two people we would have uh, a clear plastic sheet over this table with hexes on it and the destroyer would move on the table through the hexes the submarine player would have a copy of that on an A4 sheet of paper on a clipboard and they would move on that until the, the destroyer found the submarine by being in the same hex and then a depth charge attack would take place. 
So the destroyer is heading in the general direction that the torpedo has come from. It does not know where the submarine is at the moment. And one of the rules that we're going to put into this game straight away is that the submarine will move directly away from where the action was without any twisting and turning. Um, there's a reason for that, but uh, it just makes it simpler to illustrate what's going on. Alrighty, so the first move, the destroyer, can go at 36 knots, but at 36 knots, its Aztec will not work or function properly. That only happens when it's doing 15 knots or less, so I found out. So the destroyer will try and get to the general area where the submarine, uh, it, where it believes the submarine was, and then slow down. The submarine, of course, can hear the direction the destroyer is approaching from and will move away from it. So in the first move, Oh, and for every knot of speed, it's a half inch of move. So 36 knots is reduced to 18 inches on the tabletop. And the submarine can go eight knots underwater, so that would be four inches. All right. The destroyer can't ping for the submarine on this move because it was doing more than 15 knots, obviously. Now, destroyers can slow down and speed up at 10 knots a move. So in the next move, it's going to drop 10 knots of speed, which means it will be down to, um, 26 knots, still too fast to listen, but it believes it's in the general area. So 26 knots, of course, will be 13 inches. The submarine still moving four, and it's going to actually turn away Submarine. Now, if you notice and you see that the submarine is almost as big, if not bigger, than the destroyer, that's exactly right. These I-400 class Japanese submarines were monsters. Alrighty, so it's the next move. The destroyer is going to drop another 10 knots of speed, so now it'll be down to 16, which is 8 inches of movement. So... It's going to go eight and this submarine is trying to get away so it's going to go four okay still can't listen for the submarine now one thing about naval war game because the ocean's basically really big so if you start to get close to the edge of the table you can move both units back in the same direction which is what i'll do now i'll go about uh, 10 inches just for the sake of it and 10 inches there we go gives us Ram to manoeuvre. Right here, next move, we're down to 16 knots. So we're going to drop, the, the ship, the destroyer's going to drop, um, say, f six knots in speed, uh, down to 10, so it can listen. 10, of course, is five inches, so five inches there. Submarine's starting to get a bit worried. The uh, destroyer's a wee bit closer than it would like it to be. Okay, now the, stro the destroyer can now ping in this move. From the destroyer to the submarine is 12 inches. So, and remember when they ping, it's a big circle that goes out. So in our rules, at 12 inches, that's medium range, on a 20-sided dice, a one to nine, it will pick up the submarine. So we'll roll a 20-sided dice, and we rolled a three. The destroyer now has the direction and the, uh, what is it? The um, direction, it hasn't got the depth um, of the submarine. That's one thing Aztec would not do, but it has the, oh, and the, the distance. Yeah, I said that, didn't I? So it has the distance and bearing is the other thing. All right, it now knows where it needs to be. Now, generally speaking, there's a movement distance 
for a destroyer at full speed that has a turning circle but because it's uh, down to um, fraction, a third of its speed uh, they can virtually turn quite sharply okay so the destroyer now knows where the submarine is it wants to get to it it's got um, uh, what we say 10 inches of movement which is five so it will now start to turn towards the submarine which is still heading away at maximum speed okay so the destroyer will ping again it's a five on a 20 sided dice so it now still has the bearing and the distance to the submarine it's going to increase its speed now from 10 knots it's going to add on 10 to 20 that will be 10 inches in movement and 10 inches takes it to there and the submarine of course has moved to there alrighty now on the next move if we took in the fact that the destroyer is increasing its speed and the submarine is moving at its normal speed um, we could do it where the submarine moves an inch and then the destroyer would move three or four but we know that what's going to happen is that the submarine will go its four inches and the destroyer at uh, what we say 20 which is 10 inches will cross over the top of it now that is a depth charge attack and it will now launch one the destroyer has launched its depth charge attack now in some investigations that we did and generalizations in the club etc we reckoned that eight depth charges regardless of how many you dropped were going to be the maximum number of effective or chance of being effective so this destroyer has 20 depth charges it could drop five and it could drop the whole 20 but they'd be wasted because the rules say that only eight will count. So what we're gonna do is on the first crossing, we're going to drop eight depth charges. Now, the way this works is the submarine player has to write down the depth that he's at secretly. The ship launching the depth charges has to set the depth that the charges are going to go off at. In other words, he's trying to guess the depth of the submarine. Now, intelligence has told them that these Japanese submarines can go down to 300 feet. So, the, the destroyer will launch two depth charges to go off at 100, 200 and 300 feet. That's six of them. And then it's going to load up one or two. It's going to put another one at 300. And it's going to put another one at 200. So it'll have three depth charges going off at 300 feet, three at two, and two at 100. That's the eight depth charges that it's launching that are going to count. Okay, so what depth is the ship at? Well, I'm going to roll the dice. It's 300 feet and it's a six-sided dice. So one or two is 100 feet, three or four, 200 feet, etc. And I roll on the dice a four. So the submarine is at 200 feet. And at 200 feet, there are three depth charges going off. Okay. Now, the other thing you need to do now is roll a position dice. It's just, just some way to locate where the submarine actually is under the water. And we roll a dice and the dice comes up four. Now the only the reason for doing that, as I said, is just we want to know how close the depth charges going off around it are. Now there's three of them, so I'll roll three dice. And I've got a three, a six and a one. Okay. It wasn't a direct hit because there was no four. But a dice either side, a five or a three, goes off right next to the submarine and causes... ...third damage. 
Okay, so that particular submarine has suffered one third damage. Its speed now drops uh, to um, six knots, which is three inches instead of four. And um, that's it. If we had two go off one either side and the submarine suffered two thirds damage, it would have to surface. And the reason it would do that is for the crew to bail out. Um, basically, the destroyer would then sink the submarine with its guns and it's done anyway. A direct hit, of course, and the submarine just does not come up. Alrighty. So, that's... Um... Now, because of the disturbance that the depth charging does to the ocean, the destroyer cannot now search for the submarine for two more moves. And once again, I'm going to move these ships back up the table uh, 10 inches. Okay. So now we start all over again. The submarine is making its getaway at three inches. The destroyer, which was doing 20 knots when it crossed, is now going to drop 10 of those and go back to five inches. And it's going to, it's got to sort of wait for the ocean to calm down. So it can't do much for the next couple of moves. The submarine, meanwhile, in the next move, is attempting to get away. Five inches for this ship as it's circling around. Still can't listen. Submarines attempting to move. Now this move, it will be able to listen. So we're down to five inches of speed and it's circling. So it's coming across the submarine, but it doesn't know that at this point. Now this is short range for Aztec, really short range. And um, a one to 12 on a 20 sided dice will tell it that it's found the submarine. And it's a six. So straight away, it's picked up that the submarine is right under it. Now with Aztec, there was a distance of, I think it was 200 meters as it approached the target where it actually fell into a hollow and it didn't, um, didn't do any good. So um, how realistic this particular thing is just now is, is up for debate. But um, again, if you have a rule and everyone uh, reaps the benefits and the disadvantages of it. Alrighty, so on this move, the submarine well, actually, we'll move this one first. It's going to cross at uh, five, 10 knots, and the submarine is going to move away at three. And it's going to launch another depth charge attack. So, had 20, it's used eight. It's got... Um, obviously 12 left. So it's going to drop another eight. And the reason for this is because um, the ship that it was protecting um, has been torpedoed and, and is sinking, the, um, and, and fame, that's the destroyer, is on its way home. It could use up all its step charges and it can hang around while it's, um, does that. Now, if you were protecting a battleship or a convoy, one of the reasons if, if you weren't sinking the submarine is to keep the submarine down long enough for the convoy or the ship to move on. And then you leave the attack on the submarine and race back to protect, we'll call it the convoy. The submarine, of course, will stay down because it's very nervy till probably nightfall when it would surface, recharge its batteries, start up its diesels, and then try and race ahead 
of the convoy to get into an attack position again. But in this instance, Fame has, it can use up all its torpedoes because what it was protecting is gone and it's on its way back to port. So eight go in the water again. It's going to do the same combination. Um, two at 100, three at 200, three at 300. So what depth is the submarine at now? We'll roll the dice and it's a five. So the submarine went down to 300, but there's still three depth charges going off at 300. Where, what position is the submarine under the water? It's at position number six and the three depth charges go off and let's see how close they are to six. Okay, there's a six, a five, and a one. So that combination there would bring the submarine to the surface anyway. We already know that it's suffered a third damage. So either one of those would have brought it up, but there's a six. That's a direct hit. That submarine is destroyed. Okay, so I hope you understood how that uh, game works. It's, that was fairly quick and decisive. More times than not, the submarine actually escapes. But um, it's not a bad game for two people to play. And so as the 27th of the first ends, the action on this day has seen the battleship Royal Oak sunk by the Japanese submarine Ho, and it in turn was hunted down by HMS fame and depth charged to destruction. I wonder what the 28th will bring.